All right, guys, so I have just done a video about Act 3, Scene 4 through 6, and now I'm moving on to Act 4, Scene 1. So that's on page 133 for College Prep, so this is your Macbeth book. Basically, this is the part where the witches enter, and they're going to talk to, they're casting a spell, and then they're going to talk to Macbeth and tell him his future because he summoned them. He's like, I'm going to go talk to the weird sisters, and I'm going to see what they suggest I do which is his like 900th mistake in this play because why would he go to these creatures who clearly don't they're not voting for him saying like yay Macbeth they have no stake in that claim so why would he listen to them that's why you can call it blind ambition because it's like he's just blindly trusting in some kind of evil force to tell him his future which we know probably won't end well so you come in to this scene, and then it says, double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble, fillet of a finny snake, and the cauldron boil and bake, eye of newt and toad of frog, wool of bat and tongue of dog, adder's fork and blind worm sting, lizard's leg and howl's wing, for a charm of powerful trouble, like a hell broth boil and bubble. So all the witches start charming, double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn, and cauldron bubble. And as a class, we usually do this, so I make you guys start out by saying, Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. Double, double, toil and trouble, fire, burn and cauldron bubble. So it ends up being this spell and it actually in the play says that it needs to start quiet, get medium to a speaking voice and then get loud because they are doing a spell. And like I said before, I'm not encouraging witchcraft. I don't want you to go like with a cauldron in your backyard, but I do want you guys to realize that Macbeth is playing with things that he shouldn't be playing with. Just like how they say, you know, if you play with fire, you're going to get burned. That's what he's doing. And that's why we want to think about when people jump into things blindly, they don't think about the situation before jumping. And then that's where the consequences happen. So they're talking about all these like gross evil things that they're putting into the cauldron. Then it goes on to say liver of a blaspheming Jew, which I think is such a random thing. But I think they put that Shakespeare put that in there because he wants you guys to see that blaspheming Jews are not a good thing. Because when you blaspheme, that means that you are going against your religion. You're saying things that um, are like sacrilegious. And so they want you to know what they're doing, what they're putting in there is bad. And so Macbeth comes upon them. He asks them, he's like, what should I do? I call upon you in the name of your art. He says that on page 137. He says, answer me. So he's demanding them to answer. And so they say this. They say, would you rather us speak to our, would you rather speak to us or our masters? So he's like, well, I'll just go ahead and ask your masters. So then we get into this really creepy part where there's a bloody child. There's a child with a crown on its head, and then something else. I always forget that third one. Um, let me see. I don't want to get that wrong. An armored head, then a bloody child, and then the third one is a child crowned with a tree in his hand, and that's a lot of symbolism. So those are the three evil spirits that are their masters. Each one gives a warning. So the first one says, beware Macduff, beware the Thane of Fife. And that is saying you gotta be aware of him. That's a pretty easy warning. The second one is worse. He says, be bloody, bold, and resolute. Laugh to scorn the power of man. Nobody of woman born shall harm Macbeth. Now that's the most confusing one because if we are all born of a woman, every single person, that means mankind is born of a woman. We have a mother and women, female, are the people who bear children. So basically, no man who's been born of a woman can harm Macbeth. So Macbeth takes that to think, okay, no one can harm me. But the reason that they're being so specific, he should have caught on to that. He should have thought, oh, yeah, instead of saying, oh, yes, nobody can harm me, he should have waited and thought, of woman born, why would you say that it's not necessary? We'll find out why in the last act. And so then the third one says, <laughs> the third one says, on page 141, be brave as a lion, proud and take no heed of those who vex or worry, or where those plotters are. Macbeth shall never vanquish be till grain, great Burnham Wood advances against him to the high hill of Dunsinane. So his castle's on a hill and it's called Dunsinane. And so they're saying Burnham Woods, the whole forest has to be marched. In order for you to be defeated, that whole, the whole woods has to be moved to your hill. 
and he's thinking that's impossible so that's great news and then as soon as they leave as soon as they um sorry as soon as he's done he asks them to leave but then they have another thing for him they talk about this progression of kings in a line that he sees so he's looking and there's this vision of all these all these kings and it says this he starts talking to them he's like what is this banquo smiles at me and points to kings as his as his what is this so so basically on page 143 it's talking about the line of kings the people who are going to become king are actually banquo's children so he he sees this line of kings and realizes that's probably bad. Why are they crowned kings and I don't have any children to become king? What does that mean for me? So just like when they said fair is foul and foul is fair, this is a very confusing passage. It's confusing to him. So then we go on to scene two. We go on to scene two. We see um, Lady Macduff and Ross is talking. Ross is um, her cousin. He goes to tell her about everything that's happening. She is the Thane of Fife's wife. So this is the person that Macbeth should be scared of. Because Macbeth got that first warning from the witch saying, beware the, the Thane of Fife, he has decided, I'm just gonna murder his entire family. All his children, all his servants. So this is just getting worse and worse. First, he murders King Duncan. Second, he murders his, be his best friend Banquo and tries to murder Banquo's son. Then, now, it's not enough to just murder family members. It's, it's just not enough. He needs to murder their entire household because he's scared. He's acting out of fear, which you could be, you could call that corruption of power because he's saying he's been so corrupted by his position and he doesn't want to lose power that he's like, look, I'm going to kill everybody. I don't care what happens to me as a person. So basically, Lady Macduff and her entire household gets murdered. That's what happens. But Macduff is far away. He's in England, I think, trying to grab forces for Macbeth. Like, sorry, to um, defeat Macbeth. And so when Macduff finds out that his family's been murdered, he's upset, obviously. And that inspires him to want to go to war and defeat Macbeth. I'll talk about the next one in the other video.